he large. wants outside. Tyler's going to hit our intro music. If you talk over it, Tyler's going to try to punch you through the computer screen. So just Actually, no. Large, you can talk over it. You get free pass. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. You are now tuned in to this week's episode of our podcast. Today, we are going to interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in our field. By sharing our collective expertise, we will show you how to harness, control, and use your own skill set to achieve ultimate success and live the life you want. And now, please welcome your host. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Tanner, up in Wisconsin. Uh, welcome back to the Anomalies Podcast. We got the full crew with us tonight, T.A., uh, Flags, Trash Man, Marco. He's only 11 minutes fucking late as usual. And uh, that's not important because we have a special guest with us tonight. This one's been a long time coming. Uh, co-host of the Barstool Breakfast, Sirius XM show. Uh, what are you? The co- or the host of Twisted History podcast, co-host on Pod Fathers and a plethora of other content at Barstool Sports. Uh, welcome, everybody. We got Large with us. How are you doing, buddy? Very good. Thanks for inviting me on. I'm a big fan of this show. I'm a big fan of everybody except for Marco. It seems like you guys kind of gel together well, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it tonight. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. Um, before we get going, what is on the hat you are wearing? We do put oh, uh, on uh, video. The, the Gwinnett Stripers. I went down to uh, Daytona to do the Daytona 500, and um, when I was down there, the Daytona Tortugas, the organization reached out and said, if you, got, if you got a sack, just come over to Jackie Robinson Park. You can hit fungos, do whatever the hell you want. And I was, I was very interested in doing it. Jackie Robinson Park is lovely down in Daytona, Florida, if anyone ever is around there. Um, but my schedule got so wonky that um, I couldn't get to the park. The gentleman who represented Tortugas actually came to my hotel, dropped off some stuff, including hats. And he took my hat size. I'm seven and seven eighths, and I only wear a high profile. So I told him, you know, if you want me to have one, I don't need it, but I'm seven seven eight high profile. He brought me one. I wore it on a couple of podcasts and that's like I usually wear t shirts and and caps on podcasts. And all of a sudden all these other minor league teams are like, Will you wear mine? And I'm like, Yeah, de- definitely. I don't have any you know, I love the Tortugas, but I'll go wherever. And so now I get I get one every other week. So I, I mean I'm looking now at the Aberdeen Ironbirds. And now all these minor league teams also have these Mexican nights. Um, like, cause they have Mexican league hats oh, yeah. that they wear every like certain time of the season where they change up. So like the sin, the, the, the St. Bernard's turn to the San Bernardino's and like the, the dog is like a sugar skull. It's some cool shit. So minor leagues is where I was at. I don't, I don't know. I don't go to too many major league games, but I try to see minor league ball whenever I go away or travel around the country. So I rep them and they seem to appreciate it. So there you go. So do they normally start on time as well, or are they about uh, one or two innings late before they get going? No, no. The, the Mexican League one? Right. <laughs> yeah. I kind of hits home for somebody. Fuck, fuck you, um, But, yeah, so that so, I'll, I'm a, so I'm a little bit of a hat whore when it comes to that. And then Willie had said, can I get in on it? And I was like, you know, what size is your head? He's like, because seven and seven eighths is a tall order. Yeah. I think he said eight. Seven and seven eighths. Oh, are you? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And who gives a shit? Yeah, Willie's at eight and three eighths. I said, Willie, you share a hat size with the Statue of Liberty. It's going to be tough for me to have these fucking guys <laughs> to make these things custom. Um, so he gets shut out and I get all the love. That's a giant head. Holy That's shit. Insane. Yeah, yeah Willie's, Willie's a big guy. Like, we take yeah. a lot of pictures. You know, we try to back when guests used to come and show their faces face to face. And people, a lot of times, comment on me. Because I'm I'm taller sure. than Willie, and sometimes I'm taller than the other guests. So it's like myself, Dion, Jamie Dukes, Willie, and Erica, and they're like, "Who'd have thought that large would be the biggest out of them?" And biggest isn't the right term. I'm definitely the tallest. I'm just over six five, but Willie just started lifting again, and he's Jeez. fucking scary massive. He's super villain massive, and he golfed That's me true. the other day with a tight you know wind shirt on, and it was just terrifying. So. uh like that that guy and i know we're all big guys here um but uh, except for flags and i think it's one of those things where you know we we kind of know what our limitations are willie's such a dominating son of a bitch he terrifies me every day that picture was amazing he did look like he looked like a super villain yes he looks like um the um character from mario kart like browser or you know what i mean like kind of from mario golf bowser bowser yeah and uh yeah, you know, he's just a he's just a big big dude. And his calves are 
ginormous. <laughs> I know. I, I, by the way, his feet, like his toenails are like fucking poker chips. They're disgusting. And he's barefoot <laughs> a lot. But, uh, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, when they put us together, nobody knew that we were going to become close friends. And it's not bullshit. Like Willie and I yeah. are very close friends and we live a mile and a half away from each other. Like I can walk to Willie's house and that's by coincidence. Like he didn't, you know, buy the house because of me and vice versa. So, uh, it, you know, it's just one of those things that worked out because people come and go. And um, when, when does this thing air? When does this podcast air? Uh, we usually get it out within the week. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. So sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's five. Right. So, we, we, the Barstool Breakfast radio show, which is one of my primary jobs and, you know, the whole deal. So I do that every morning. Started out with a, a young lady, uh, Julie Stewart Binks. JSB. Yeah, I was about to say JSB, right? JSB, yeah. And I've, I never met her. It was way before me. And then she got fired. And yeah. for a host of reasons, and some of it is a little bit salacious, so I won't say it here. Then Francis, who was oh. the third wheel there, it was just him and Willie. Then Willie went away to... Um, on a on a postponed honeymoon he never went away when he got married so he went away so francis asked me to come on i did like six out of the 10 days with francis while willie was away for two weeks in italy and then when willie came back francis says this guy is gelling with me why don't you see if he gels with you and then i wound up gelling with willie so then i became the third chair kind of like they integrated me in eventually and then francis got fired for writing about the dead girl, which, you know, yeah, is unfortunate. Yeah. He hit, he yeah. hit bad timing. Yeah. Just bad, bad timing. It wasn't a great, you know, if he would have showed me that blog, I probably would have said publish it anyway. I probably would have said don't publish it. Um, yeah. Just wasn't, it was a weird place. Um, so then Francis got fired. And then, so then it's me and Willie. And then eventually we brought in like another third guy, at least partially this guy, uh, Brandon Newman. Be new. Uh, he was doing podcasts, be new and stuff like that. And uh, by the time this podcast comes out, I think he's quitting tomorrow. So he's going to be off the show. So uh, for, oh, for a slow moving company that hires, 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 never fires. I mean, when do you see fucking Barstool fire? No. Um, Three times Barstool, ever. Barstool Francis. Breakfast. <laughs> yeah, like Barstool <laughs> Breakfast, it seems, it seems to be the place, you know, so you got to walk with your head on a fucking swivel because there's a lot of people there who – People like commenters say, oh, they don't do shit. How the fuck does he still have a job? Like Dave, what a piece of shit, right? But no, like people are like, how, how does this guy still have a job? And then meanwhile, you know, Barstool Breakfast is just rifling through guests, uh, excuse me, hosts um, every six months. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, shit. Yeah, hopefully Willie's next. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's that. So is the, not to go too into the weeds on that, but we're all pretty big avid listeners of Barstool Radio, I think. Mm -hmm. is the plan to just go you and Willie or would you kind of organically try to fit in a third or what does that look like? I find the, the biggest hurdle for us and, you know, it may sound kind of tried. The biggest hurdle for us to get somebody else in there regularly is the time. These kids yeah. do not want to get up. They, do, yeah, they, yeah. they just don't. And then I, Brent, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable because it's like a national radio show. Yeah. It's, it's an honor to do it. You're like, doing I, the drive I was, time East coast. Like that yeah. prime time. Yeah. Yeah, and so we're trash prime time. man West Coast. Right. And, you know, like it's, you know, Howard Stern rules the airwaves still. But yeah. outside of that, on the serious platform, outside of sports radio, so there's talk radio, there's morning talk radio, there's a void, right? Because yeah. a lot of people go to local terrestrial radio to listen to the Grease Man or some local sports guy or NEI or something like that. So our little genre, our little niche, there's like low hanging fruit. So we have a national audience. Like sometimes when people get calls from other, we get calls from fucking everywhere. So it really is a pleasure doing it. But, you know, these, and I say kids, you know, with the most respectful sense of the words, because I do respect the, the uh, creativity of all the people that I work with almost across the board. But, you know, a lot of them are noon to midnight they're still grinding it out but it's just mornings don't agree with them so exactly. like uh, as far as being an organic replacement within the um place i don't know unless you guys tell me who jumps to mind i don't know I who jumps one. to mind. right there tanner Tanner. yeah i mean obviously <laughs> but willie uh, was doing this he wanted to do this cultural podcast called two bigs yep um you know yeah. about the black culture and i couldn't help him with it so he had this guy brandon newman who had had some um, success with a 
uh, show out on the West Coast. So we brought him in. And then a lot of stuff had happened where it just wasn't working with him. You know, it just wasn't gelling. And then there was some, you know, comments in and around a lot of the racial tensions and whatnot, which maybe had him on the outside looking in, perhaps not. Maybe it was self-inflicted, perhaps not. I have no fucking clue. But it looks like that is coming to an end. I think he must have something else lined up. Um, I haven't spoke to him yet. Um, well, he's got a new kid and stuff, and uh, I would think he's he's doing the responsible thing. He's probably been talking, and he's taking a step back from breakfast. I, I feel yeah. like, and so he's he's had his conversations. I'm sure he's. Yeah, I would think okay. so. He's a smart guy, you know, ND graduate. If that means anything to anybody, Ball also State. Also, the Ball State, Ball State yeah. grad, right here. Thank you. Nice. Trip, trip. Yep. Yeah, that I, means I, I, nothing to anybody, but no, yeah. not at all. <laughs> Chico um, State dropout. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Chico um, State Penitentiary. That's nice, trash man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that's so that's the state. So we have like Jetski sitting in the studio now. I think Jetski has a nice little groove going. Sometimes people are hit and miss with sometimes with Patty. Some people love him. Some people don't. Some people love me. Some people don't. Like it's hey. you know Za is great. Um, so we do have a cast of characters in and around the booth that fill in the blanks as opposed to like being, oh, it's just back to you and Willie. You can't take any days off or anything like that. That's not the case at all. We do have like a nice cast of characters, truly characters, of, you know, Zimbabwe and midget, uh, you know, a lanky <laughs> gay guy, a, you know, a SoundCloud rapper, an ex NFL dude, an over the hill Wall Street guy. You know, it's a fucking Benetton ad. You know, Rod is a little black old school dude from Baltimore. <laughs> you know, from serious. That guy is the coolest cat you've ever seen. And it's low energy ass Nico or something like all these, all these guys. It really is. And I think that's one of the reasons why I can get relatively um, inappropriate sometimes. Yeah. You know, because I'm surrounded by my people, right? Like we can all bust each other's balls as opposed to it was just like, you know, um, CCK, where you see more black people in the Beatles than in that fucking show, you know? And <laughs> so they have to kind of watch their fucking mouths to a degree. Um, that's yeah, so. That's why I love, I mean, I'm a, I'm a white farmer from Northern Wisconsin, right? So I didn't grow up with diversity. You know, there was like the, the token black guy in my school and, you know, bless his soul. His, his family moved in from the military or whatever. But like, I got my diversity training listening to you bastards on the radio. Mm. Uh, and, and like, I love it when people want to call out Barstool or, you know, that culture for being racist or whatever. It's like, listen to the breakfast show. They got a black Hulk. They got an old white guy, a Zimbabwe midget, a gay dude, and a SoundCloud rapper. Right. And, and you know, I like mean, a guy from like Harvard and a woman from ESPN and <laughs> another black dude from Ball State, apparently. Like, you know, <laughs> we don't just go and like replace you with Captain Cons, who I love. Well, yeah. Captain Cons is good in a pinch because he'll talk a wolf off a fucking meat truck. I mean, that guy can <laughs> put him down, you know? And, you know, like, and then you have guys who come in and I'll tell you who I is, is not sneaky good. I don't know why more people don't use him. I think I'm the only person that uses him. Is this Jeff. Florentine guy, Jim Florentine? Oh, oh yeah, he's hilarious. That fucking guy's voice is butter. It's gold. Yeah, I yeah. thought you. I thought you were gonna say wow. Vibs. Oh Vibs yeah, Vibs is fucking I love hilarious. Vibs. Yeah, I love Vibs. So and so he does Twisted History at least every other one with me. Um, and you know, so Twisted History is my baby. It's the podcast that I do. My wife uh, and I came up with it. Not that it was like a you know higher thinking. And Annie does all. Um, the uh, research for it and she does all the social for it which is no small thing she does it for free um i pay her a dick uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so she doesn't get paid much a modest payment yeah and then uh what's been nice is that people have been asking to be part of it so um this week we did it with uh vibs next week patty wants to do twisted history saturday night live the following week, I'll go back and we'll do it with Vibs. And then the week after that, uh, the Wonton Don had asked if he could do it. And then we'll go back with Vibs. And then after that, you know, I think uh, Rear Admiral wants to. So I, it's one of those things where we've had KC and Jerry Thornton a couple of times and Clem and uh, Chief and Eddie. My, those guys in Chicago are uh, extraordinary. Hilarious. Um, yeah. Honestly, cool. talent. Yeah. Eddie is one of my favorite guys at Barstool. Is he? Like, it's hard to fucking hate that guy. Like, yeah. honestly, it's him and Spider, the only two guys I think at Barstool you can't hate. Yeah. I, you know what? I think Clem fits that. Yes. yes. Yeah. If Clem doesn't like you, you're a grade A piece of shit. Yeah, he is, he's a divining rod for assholes. And 
and I, I, you know, like I know that you guys certainly aren't fanboying with me, but if you think this is too much barstool stuff, you can slow me down at any time. But uh, Eddie was like my a normal conversation, right? Ed, Eddie was my guy for uh, Twisted History. When I developed it, it was at a time where Eddie was supposedly coming to New York. Like you can see how Eddie is very uh, favored by Dave, and yeah. so when oh, Dave yeah. was originally leaving Barstool Radio. And Riggs had started to take off with this Barstool Classic, which is, you know, just huge. Um, Eddie was the go-to guy. So they were thinking about moving him without even telling him. <laughs> like, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, I had heard about it through some people. So I'd ask him. So we, we, he sat and he read the Twisted History Kamikazes with me. And then I did it with Vibs too, the two of them. And the only reason that I decided to have Vibs as the lead, like, you know, co-host, um, second chair or whatever you want to call it is because of one eddie's not here and doing it with somebody who's close it just it makes it easier to pinch and two eddie and i are kind of both laid back fat guys so sometimes i need vibs <laughs> to be you know a little jumpy in a wheel like you know a guy who's able to maybe do a chin up like i need that because if eddie's you know like if, if i have no energy and eddie has no energy we're talking about serial killers kind of matter of factly when there's baby heads in the fridge and stuff that you really want to kind of deep dive in. You want somebody wide eyed like Vibs being like, no way, not her genitals, like that type of stuff. Um, so, so then that, that, that was the uh, thing. And then Eddie and Chief both do like kind of a history thing too, which is extraordinary. Carl is wonderful. White Sox Dave is there. No, I'm just kidding. White Sox Dave is wonderful. <laughs> and I love that guy, Dante. The new guy yeah. who's in there, who's like used to be a DJ for fucking. Yeah, White Dante Sox. the Don. Yeah, guys. Oh, gee. He's awesome. He, I never met him. I've, um, I've been hearing about Dante the Don since I was in fucking eighth grade. Good God. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been a stoolie since I was in eighth grade, so. I was. He, he was in eighth grade for three years, so we don't yeah. know what. <laughs> hey, but. no. First grade, not eighth grade. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Yeah. First grade, <laughs> toughest three years of trash man's life. Yeah. Correct. He was working full time. You can't blame yeah. him. It's true. So trash man is an actual trash man. Like his family owns a, whatever you want to call it, sanitation company. Is that the Pardon? proper term? Yeah. It's a, we own a sanitation company, moving company, and a recycling company. And I've worked for all three since I was 13 years old. Nice. Yeah, we have 25. A, a guy that I grew up with. He was, uh, we used to call him Dumb Johnny, and I tutored him to get his GED and all that stuff. And when he was 18, he entered into the sanitation, New York City Sanitation Department. I think he's like 18 years old, 19. Somebody's going to maybe say, the large, you lying. He was 21. I don't give a fuck. All I know is that when Johnny, Johnny turned, I'm 48 now. I think when he turned 45, he had kids very young, too. When he turned 45, his kids were out of college and he retired with like a huge fucking pension. Like, you know, like whatever. It's the a city. good business. And he was doing, you know, side jobs. He was tarring roofs. So like dumb Johnny was the smartest fucking guy I've ever met. You yeah. know what I mean? And dumb <laughs> Johnny was the guy he called when you needed a dumpster or you'd have like the guys come out with the truck if you, you know. So um, yeah, was, good uh, buddy of mine up in South Bend, actually. Uh, he He's an HVAC guy. He had his kids at like 22 uh, mm -hmm. and both of they're like 14 months apart. Two little girls they are adorable. And he got snipped and he's going to, he's got, uh, he started, he just started his own company and 20 years from now, he'll be 50 years old and just Sad. sitting on a company and done. All right, I'm, no. I'm 48. I have a 10 year old daughter. I have a 13 year old son, a 16 year old son. I'm nowhere near being done. So yeah. it's one of those, who's the dumb Johnny now? It's me. It's, on audio. <laughs> it's uh, this is not something I plan on getting into with you, Large. But since you're here, why the hell not? It's almost fun. So I'm I'm 26. You know, I I'm not married. I don't have kids. Oof. But Are you 26? We, uh, yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> 26. <laughs> I'm 25. And but how old do you think I was? I, no, I, I don't like to judge. It's like a lead in the water. Trucker Jim, you know. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well. I mean, it's fun to, so like, I listen to Podfathers just because it's a likable cast and crew, right? And you guys keep it lighthearted, and that's what I want during the day. Um, like, it's fun to follow along with you guys being parents. Like, my parents had me convinced that being a parent was the worst fucking job on the planet, you know, as a kid. As I grow up and I get to see 
other friends and other people be parents. It seems pretty fun. Obviously, it's not all unicorns and rainbows and shit, but you guys make it seem like you're having a blast. So would you say being a father is like the most rewarding thing you have going in your life? I say it all the time that it's the only thing that I've done that's not overrated. I've been lucky enough that I've eaten in the finest restaurants or whatever the fuck people could say to impress people. I don't know. But I've gone on vacations and, and stuff. And I find that everything is overrated. And I said this, I think, on Podfathers maybe last week. The, the Grand Canyon is, is breathtaking, but it's just the Grand Canyon. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's, a um, it's awesome and stuff, but it's, it's fucking overrated. I just find that everything is. I, uh, my 13 year old, who's not a sports guy, um, has kind of grown into his body and he's a big kid. He played his first game, uh, this weekend football. And I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. I'm not a dad who pushes my kids to play sports or anything like that. God help Willie's kid. Um, and he got <laughs> in and he started and he did just fairly well, fairly well. And I was on the sidelines gripping, you know, the thing. And then I didn't realize that I was crying at some point and stuff like that. And I got to tell you, it's, and then two of the coaches had come over to me afterwards and told me, by the way, your son really stepped up because it was the first game, first scrimmage game. And one of the kids who was center nose guard never made it to weigh-ins. So you can't even play in the scrimmage if you didn't make it to weigh-ins. So the next weigh-in was after the scrimmage. They had nobody snap the ball. My son has never played before at 13, which is very late to get started. He's a big kid, big, strong kid. Um, went in there and, and you know, the, the score was 12 to 2. She's in a traditional football score. Um, you know, so all 12, there was a safety. Oh, there was a safety because my kid fucked up a snap. But like, but even though like all that stuff, I don't remember it except because it was the score. It was so, and I've had, and it's not only that. My daughter has sang in Carnegie Hall four times, yeah. she, four or five times she's done uh, uh, solos uh, for the little uh, Mozart program. And she's taken first place four out of five times. My older son has done a bunch of extraordinary things, but it's not just that. It's like these little things that they do individually, um, whether it's like some sort of Christian charity thing or just like when they, they, just, they just become good people and do good things, that it's the only thing right now that's not overrated. You know, like naps are not overrated to me. I, I love a fucking good nap. Dumps, I love feeling the, the feeling of something leaving my body no matter what it is, the mucus, <laughs> semen, fucking earwax, <laughs> urine, uh, but certainly feces. It's not yeah. overrated just to uh, just get that shit out of you. Kids are fucking the best. And Clem is going through it. Five and two, five yeah. and three or whatever. Those are yeah, the lean years. Yeah. But once you get a little bit onto that autopilot thing, man, and it comes in, and, you know, and maybe your kid will be a, you know, meth head serial killer. You know, mine aren't. I'm having a great fucking time with it, you know? <laughs> and I like my wife. So I, I really am. I am as happy now. I'm happier now than I've ever been, I believe, in my life. And uh, and that's the truth. And and the person that I have to thank for that is Dave or, and Erica to a certain degree because I made a little bit of money on Wall Street. These guys maybe you may or may not know. I was on Wall Street for 25 years. Yeah, yeah you, you and, talk about it a lot. Yeah, I, I send a word money. on my a managing director. Um, no big deal. But my business was going to shit, the law of diminishing returns. So when I decided to take a chance and do this, you know, it was a little bit scary, a little bit of a gamble, and holy shit, did it pay off. So, uh, you know, I've signed a three-year deal. I'll be peddling smut until I'm 50. I'll figure out what I'm going to do after that. But right now, I'm in the middle of a very good ride, and all I have to do is show up at the office at 6.30 a.m. for a 7 o'clock, you know. Thing. Which is not that fucking early. <laughs> no, for not, me. No, you know, I, I don't basically... understand. You're I don't understand blue collar group of dudes. So. Okay. No, and I, I know. I, I, I appreciate the blue collar. Like my dad uh, was a structural steel worker, an iron worker, one of a macho men in the industry, walked around on I-beams 80 stories up. And this is before OSHA. And he Dang. came over from Ireland on a boat. He only dropped out of school in fifth grade when his dad died, deep sea fisherman, farmer, and iron worker. That's it. My dad does not know how to write scripts. Your dad was a farmer? Yes, my dad's family still owns a farm right outside of Skibbereen in uh, Cork, Ireland, uh, wow. you know, a cattle farm. No yeah. shit, man. I never yeah. heard you talk about that. No, you know, I very rarely do because when I go back now, my mom is from Dublin. My, both my parents are from the other side. So sometimes I tend to go to more of the city. And then sure. the island that my dad was born on, Horse Island, just recently sold to like some private investors. So when I go back, it's like those asshole golf trips that you take with wall street guys or, you know, go to the bigger cities, but no, my pop didn't wear uh, underwear until he came to this country. He was 19 years old. So that's Good my God. cut. 
Like that's my cut. And I think that's what something, my two brothers are both local three electricians. I'm the first person in my family, either side, mom or dad, Riley or McCarthy to graduate from college. So if people think that I have a silver spoon or if people think that I was born on third base or something like that, that's not true. I kind of hit a triple. And that's why me and Willie get along so well, because he's a guy who grew up dirt poor in the Bronx. And he grew up, he talks about it as being like the housing project, but Willie grew up in the ghetto. And yeah. his dad was a, uh, was a hospital worker. Didn't make a lot of money. And his brother ate as much as Willie. And his mom was tough. His mom just recently passed away. She's a great woman. Yeah. Sister, tough. Um, but I grew up in Brooklyn. And so we, we knew a lot of the same things, even though we're, he's got an old soul and I have a little bit of a younger soul, believe it or not. And um, I think that's why we get along. I think why there's a little bit of mutual respect, even though we don't look uh, like we should be on the same, you know, <laughs> I don't know, on the same fucking uh, I, jet ski, you know. I, and that, I think it's something like when people have to go through that type of shit growing up, mm -hmm. like it's almost like you relate more. And that's like people who grew up in your situation and situations like mine, because I grew up in a trailer park, like literally my family didn't have any money and they were like, for some reason, owning a garbage company wasn't enough. You can kind of tell. We were, dirt, we were dirt poor living in a trailer park, our whole family, and we fucking dug ourselves out. And that's kind of the cool part. Like getting yourself out of it's kind of cool. And I'm 25. Yeah. I own a house and fucking, I right. never thought that would happen. And I don't think that you want your kids to go through it. My, my dad didn't want no. like, you know, like I, and as a result, my father right now is a hell of a lot better grandfather than he was a dad. That's not a yeah. dick to him. He didn't hit us. <laughs> or my dad was just never around because he was building lower Manhattan. He put the uh, antenna on top of the world trade center. As soon as the towers fell, he's the one who volunteered and he had fucking no knees. Like he was, he's a dude, you know, like he's a man's man. And I, I'd come yeah, home from working on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and I'd be like, man, we had an IPO today. I'd be sitting at my mom's table. It was like, it was Rambus. And I'm doing the numbers, and Tommy K is like, what do you got? I'm like, it's 1.6 million, but we're like 138 and a half. And he's like, I need the number. Where are we flat? I'm like, five eights. It's in it. He's like, well, we're looking. Maybe we'll be long 200 grand. I'll be like, right, you know, print it out of half. 1.68 million prints. Ah, everybody wants a piece of it. I'm long 200 grand. The stock takes off. We wound up making 75 grand in eight minutes and uh, the whole day. It's the loudest thing I ever fucking, you know, I'm telling that story at dinner. My dad's like, yeah, you ever castrate anything? I'm like, no, I never did that. <laughs> you, win. you know, just give me something. Um, you know, so it's, you know, it's that type of dichotomy. I lost my Brooklyn accent. My brothers have very heavy Brooklyn accents where my dad has a brogue. You know, I never was into American sports. I know you guys talk about sports a lot. That's why I'm a de facto boxing guy. Um, just was never a sports guy because my pop wasn't. Um, and then, you know, so made me a little bit of a weirdo. But I think it, like, and to Ronnie's point, I think it makes this interesting. And I think it's going to make our kids interesting too. You know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'll be spoiled little well, pricks, but mine are Well, one of my favorite things about breakfast is the two of you guys, you know, you, you know, obviously different races or whatever, but... Mm -hmm. You represent, I think, the majority of America, right? And Bingo. you guys are able to be best of buddies. And you come from different worlds. You come from different, you know, backgrounds. But you have so many similarities. And you guys can relate to each other. And I think that's how um, I can relate to that. I can relate to Ronnie. I can relate to Tanner. Because I grew up in small town, southern Indiana. If you know of Hoosiers, I, I, they were in my basketball. I played basketball at the Milan um, uh, sure. which is Hoosiers it was based off of. Mm -hmm. And so for me to listen to you, I feel like I get out of the craziness of, you know, the politics and the debates and all this stuff and just all this bullshit. And it, it's just a little slice of real Americans and you guys get along so well. And I just appreciate that. And that's why I'm such a big fan of you, of Willie, of everybody. And I, I didn't really know that much of Willie being a Colts fan. I knew they always, uh, you know, Pittsburgh was always a tough, you know, play for us or whatever. And I, I knew his name, but, you know, getting to know him as a person, uh, Keisha and, and um, you know, it, it's, it's just good for me to hear you guys get along because it just makes me feel better as an American to know that, you know what, all this stuff going on, you know what, we're, we can all get together and get, get along and have a good time. Willie is deceptively emotional. He's deceptively um, empathetic. 
right? Like he's, he's got a tremendous amount of empathy. We talked about mental health last week yeah. on a flyer. Like we didn't necessarily even want to. And we started speaking about it. And I had said something in the middle because therapy doesn't work for me. And we've, and I, you know, I went through at the end that I tried it, but um, meditation does. So I made the point of saying out loud, it doesn't work for everybody. And then by the end of the show, I said, by the way, that's probably one of the more ignorant things I said. The only reason I know that it doesn't work for me is because I fucking tried it. Please try it because if it yeah. does work for you, holy shit, your life's going to change. You know what I mean? So you can get a little bit ignorant and not know, you know, and have to peel something back. And Willie was the more empathetic one at that point because yeah. he's been through it and he was saying how he'd like to see the lead. And that's another very interesting thing. Like all of a sudden sit next to a guy and kind of ask him a question about a sporting event, knowing that he played two Super Bowls, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no shit. It, yeah, like mm -hmm. I was seven and five in college boxing, and I think that's fucking the best, right? I mean, <laughs> he played in two Super Bowls. I never talk about college boxing. <laughs> you know, I just <laughs> never talk about the Brooklyn Brawler. I was impressive. Can I talk about it now? Um, go, go right he ahead. Was, he was like, also we so open about. about he, I was just gonna, he was so open about like how it, you know it makes sense for him to have like personal session, but you know he might feel more judged for having like a, a marriage counseling. It's like you know yes. what we could all have more marriage counseling. We could pro all probably yeah. communicate to our wives better. We could all you know whatever. And and he was just so open, and and that's another part of why I, I like you guys because you just lay it all out on the table, you know, yeah. regardless of what the topic is. You want to talk about him getting emotional, and and we do have other shit we want to sure. bring up. And I know we're a little time limited, but when Kirk Minahan and him had their little beef, mm -hmm. maybe not a little, and that I was and if great. You, if you don't feel like getting attacked by them crazy people. We can just tell me to shut up right now. But when him and fucking Willie went after it on live radio, I mean, yeah. I, I had a pull, I almost pulled my pickup over to the side of the road. I was so enthralled in what was going to happen next, and you were meet, moderating. So I was trying. trying to picture what it was like for you because you were trying you know, to make I, jokes. Oh I was God. lucky enough to I was lucky enough to miss. Um, I think there was two major days, and I was lucky enough to have missed one. So if okay. I've been kind of at thirty thousand feet with that. I, I just I don't know enough about Kirk because I don't care about. Um, like the New England local sports scene or local radio outside of our little microcosm didn't matter mm -hmm. to me. The only person that I listened to outside of local news or Bloomberg radio or something would be Stern. So I had no idea who he was. I had no idea of his following. So when this shit all hit the fan, I think I had yelled during that inf because I had to get these two guys together. And I told, I think Kirk to shut the fuck up or something like that. And he did. Joking. Yeah. And you know, like it was one of those things where everyone's like, you know, at a halt, but when it got to that point, I was like, this isn't us. Like, this isn't us. And I know that it is for somebody. And some people really, really enjoy that. I, I just don't. So I said not to take a higher road, not to go low, not to do anything. I, I was like, it's just easier not to do that. You know, politics now, it, you know, gives you that same thing. You can go one way or the other. I went down the middle today talking about what happened with the debates, or at least I thought I did. And I got a couple of people who are very on the left who are very mad at me. And then I got a couple of people who are on the right who are very mad at me. I don't care about what either of them had to say because they were both lashing out. And I'm the type of guy, I think Tanner, you can attest to this. You can reach out to me on DMs and I, I'll talk to you about something. Like people ask oh, okay. me my advice or they ask me my opinion or they'll ask me for some, don't ask me for money. And I'll answer and I'll have like an intelligent discussion. As long as I'm taking a dump that's long enough for me to answer, I'll answer. And I try to get to them all. I really do. Um, we were talking about like the milk markets one time on DMs and conversation. Yeah, it must have been interesting know, enough or a dump was hard enough, whatever. But right. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and it's lucky to draw sometimes like whoever's up top gets to go and whatnot. But I guess insulting people from both sides mean that I truly You're wasn't something right. partisan, you know, like, so I wasn't doing enough to keep the Trumpers happy. And I wasn't doing enough to keep the Biden people happy. And maybe that's the way we try to do it down the middle. Cause there's a natural, well, he's a Democrat. I'm the Republican. Cause I was the face of capitalism for such a long time. And well, he's a black dude. So, you know, like that's, that's <laughs> what people decide is the left and the right. And 
So that's even something that we try to stay away from, except in extraordinary things like a crazy ass debate. And the reason I liken that back to uh, Kirk is we don't try to get too deep in the mud unless it's like a joking around thing, like Lenny Ball's leaving us for dead with fantasy football or, sure. you know, something like that. But like there's been runners. Or with Dana. Like, <laughs> yeah, like there's been runners with like Trista. Um, yeah, Dana to a certain degree, but they never really go anywhere. It's just, yeah. it's just not our thing because, listen, we're the only two-hour show on the dial. We're the only two-hour show on the dial, and we have to fill up stuff. So we could fill it up with Bart Stoolish stuff. But we have a lot of commuters, a lot of people who are driving fucking tractors from, you know, Lake Minnetonka to fucking Milwaukee, right, who are, you know, abnormally large, don't look 26. Like, it, there's a lot of – they don't give a shit about Trista looking for her AirPods at a golf course. Like, right. you know what no, I mean? Like, not a goddamn minute. Not, not a minute. And, and I'm, that's not a dig on Trista. They don't give a shit about Big Cat having his feelings hurt about not being consulted on Trump. And it probably doesn't reflect well on him, and Big Cat is an extraordinary guy. I go to him for, for things. He's one of my first guys to go to. So that's not a dig on him either. Um, so we try to – be less barstool centric. Like CCK yeah. is in the middle of the day. It's all stoolies. You know what I mean? We have yeah, the that's exactly it. Yeah, we, we, we have the, the barstool commuters. drama. Well, every other show. Yeah. Minus the cousins, I guess. But but we go to the barstool breakfast, and I think a lot of people do hear kind of what's happening in the world, and then get some insight from an old white dude. No offense. Nah, no offense. You know what I mean. And then a ginormous black guy. And yeah. then the funny, yeah. hilarious kind no, of No, you can you can use the N-word. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> White guy giving uh-huh. a big uh, uh, <laughs> You go first. You got that pass. <laughs> never, I never got it. <laughs> no, but this I is, and I appreciate that. That's where you aim for. This is one thing I gotta queue up. So Marco, I know you are from a different world, uh, in the, the blue collar world, but you're in Iowa and, and you've been quiet this whole time. So I wanna queue you up, make sure you have a chance to actually talk. So you have any questions there? You've been quiet this whole time. I do. Am I clear? We can hear me. Got you. Cool. Yeah, you don't sound like a helicopter. And yeah. I was trying to fix the mic. Anyways, so um, large. The only reason I I wasn't super involved is because I haven't been a, a Barstool fan this whole time, and just until recently, I the only show I listen to right now is the Breakfast Morning Show. So the Barstool Breakfast Show. So we all got together because of Pat McAfee mm-hmm. um, and we, we were with him through the whole ride from the beginning after he did Bob and Tom got with Barstool and, and everything um, and we've been tight for two years do you have uh, people uh, you talked about mm-hmm. Willie oh look at the puppy oh god <laughs> she was asleep on my lap the whole time and now I'm gonna have to get rid of her that's awesome okay, go ahead my man um, set, uh, besides Willie that you met through Barstool do you have other people that you've met via internet or since you became uh, popular with Barstool, do you have people like that that, you're, that you got tight with besides Willie? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's strangers, there's internet strangers that I have a good back and forth with. Um, to be honest with you, Tanner is one of them um, because I don't know Tanner. Um, you know, never met him face to face and stuff. There's a couple other people who've like stopped into New York and they've been like, listen, I don't get weird, but can I buy you a beer? I'd be like, I don't know if I'm going to do that, but certainly I meet you for a coffee or something. You know, people sometimes want, thanks for that. Uh, people sometimes Saint want some career, but uh, any of uh, these are the guys who are saying hello. These are uh, anomaly guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's, Hi, we actually had, we, we've over. had O'Malley on nice here. So, nice like, to see you. Hi, Tyler. Tyler. Uh, I, all the sounds comes through my headphones, so she's not being rude. I can't hear you. I don't normally yeah. look like this, but I got Chinese food spilled all over me. Right. I hear. Oh, she's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. She's, she's a vision. Um, <laughs> love you, um, but, like, so outside of that, you know, inside a bar stool, I'm very close with uh, Willie. Inside a bar stool, I'm very close with Clem. Inside a bar stool, I'm very close with Kevin. Um, Kevin's the guy who got me there, so I talked to him quite a bit. Yeah, KFC. Um, He's my dude. I love that guy. Yeah, and he does a very good job. And sometimes he gets on the outside looking in because the pen deal was all about bet gambling. Kevin's yeah. not. Kevin's all about the entertainment. Um, you know, the entertainment side, the e, the e magazine as opposed to Sports Illustrated. Um, but 
there is no bar stool without the the e weekly right you know there's oh, no shit right and chicks so in the office those yeah. girls there's nobody yeah. who works harder than them uh, chicks in the office i love i love kc i love i love kc and that's not in a creepy way like i love kc like i'm rummaging through a garbage i love so Fran, like, yeah i love fights um he sits next to keith how much coke does he do God, vice is a ton of blow no i don't know <laughs> yeah. I, I, I gotta be I, you know what like i've never and again, it's it's part of the thing, like because I talk about coke quite a bit uh, on the show or on other things because of the Wall Street connection. I haven't seen any outside of the tremendous amount of weed smoking that goes on there, and the <laughs> tremendous amount of beer. Uh, excuse Many me, times too fire fire shows Are up. we just talking about Sean Latham right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like Sean too. Like Sean was a guy who got into the weeds. Like when I we were talking about Kirk and and politics oh, and stuff like yeah, Sean yeah. created a cardinal sin of pissing off uh, like Internal. there was blood in the water. And I think he's yeah. still recovering from that with like oh, yeah. the comment the, stuff. And the it, comment it hurts. section eats yeah. him alive. It sucks. We love Sean. We bet him on here. And you should. And you know who else loves Sean Barstool because he constantly gets stuff sponsored. Yeah. He makes right. money. So other people like, yeah, you're no fucking large. They never said that. I'm just using myself to be self-deprecating. I don't sell as much as Sean sells. I don't sell his deal with Labatt must be impressive, right? Yeah, twenty dollars. Yeah, <clears throat> that Labatt deal deal has been going on for a minute. So yeah, I mean, and, and they love him. Good. And you Didn't know, they like, signed a whole does. year. Yeah, Johnsonville had signed on with him for a while. I mean, you know, there's that that quasi like anyone who sponsors cornhole. Like you know, I don't want to yeah. use white trash, but it is the one that I'm going after. Like I would right love audience. for them. We just started this uh, new piece of content called Belly Up. I mean, while you're doing this drink content stuff. There's there's all these like type of things that you're throwing at these people to try to get um, um, sponsored, and you don't know what's going to hit. You really don't know what's going to hit or what's not. But Sean's twenty dollars chef has been extremely, um, extremely successful, not compared to Call Her Daddy. So right. No. Well, yeah. Sex sells. Sucking, sucking dicks is a little more entertaining than cheap <laughs> salsa right with three G in it on a grill. Welcome. But do, do, does do, is is sucking dick so adver, uh, entertaining? Not when it's yours, that it sells more merchandise than every other podcast combined, including PF, yeah, well, uh, including part of my take, including uh, chicks in the office, including their, all that dem stuff. their demographic is the Taylor Swift demographic, right? The most profitable demographic in the fucking world. They sell White more women merch age than sixteen every... to thirty. Every other podcast combined, they yeah. sell, and not so, they, she. It's so. genius. It's yeah. fucking genius. It, their demographic is the most lucrative, profitable demographic in the world. If I was I'll a get, hot I'll, blonde chick, I would be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, Every college town I've been to since they came out with their podcast and since they started selling merch, mm -hmm. I've seen merch of them. Like Chico State, every chick that I've ever seen since that came out where is it my a lot of my wife's friends are single girls who are just got out of college all of them love it it's fucking ridiculous how much color daddy merch i've seen I, I will tell you right now that i'm lucky enough to do back when we were allowed to be next to people i've been lucky enough to do some bud light tours and natty light tours as far as college football games go so i get to go to cool football games it's awesome it really is it's awesome and um whenever i go to these things we go to uh fraternity houses sometimes oh, yeah. sorority houses like we'll be on sorority road just to give out merch but light merch but light sponsored barstool merch and we throw mm -hmm. out beers to everyone and all that kind of stuff and we're hanging around on mainly fraternity houses i shouldn't say sorority houses we don't go to those and every girl who comes up to me wants to know about the caller daddy girls and everyone. every every frat house that we walk into or dorm room or sorority or anything all have a bottle of pink whitney so you look at those two things in particular, right? What hits? Spit and Chicklet is a hit on its own. It's the biggest hockey podcast in the world. That's and a it's a four-headed Hydra with Grinnell, R.A., um, Biz, and Ryan Whitney. It's on top of that. Three and R.A. Yes. Yeah, By the way, if you, ever, if, if you want to ever listen to Ryan Whitney not be Ryan Whitney, you should listen to Ryan Whitney on the Podfathers. Hearing that guy talk about what it's like to be a father, he totally let his guard down 100% out there. And afterwards, he was like, 
I'm going to do this again. Like he was like, yeah. this is because whenever he comes to New York office, you know, he's, he's on to be like a hard O and go against Dave and all that stuff. He came in and Podfathers is the friendly, it's your, it's your safe space, man. There's nothing there that's going to hurt you. Me and Clem are not going to push you to your limits. We're just going to kind of, you know, whatever. Wet Willie is the worst. Um, and he really opened up to it. But, you know, like I'm looking to get a bar stool wine named after me, a gentleman's wet. And if they do that, maybe they do a hundred cases, a hundred cases. That's, that's enough wine. I can't buy it. That's a lot of wine. I'll buy it. Since you're talking about wine, when you guys had the Portuguese wine oh. person in, yeah. I so literally nice. texted our group chat and I'm like, I, I'm craving, because my, my family's all from Portugal. Like, okay. So right. Everyone loved I'm that a, silken spice, that $10 bottle that you serve a little bit chilled. Yeah. That was a huge hit. That was my it's very great. first episode. That I got oh. to listen to. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And so we do that every now and again where we have a wine person, a scotch person, like something come in and we kind of go down that rabbit hole. But my point with the wine is it's like if we do silk and spice, because I'd be silk and Willie would be spice, or like we do whatever it is, they'll make a hundred cases or something. Mm -hmm. uh, Pink Whitney, they did 180,000 cases on the first press. So they well, knew. That's how fucking much they did. <laughs> yeah, and it <laughs> flew off the shelves in minutes and the i think 12 nhl teams are going to house it in their state cool. if we ever open up arenas again and we haven't opened up in fucking like canada and biz has his finger on canada the you know we the make money market from, there Jeez. yeah and that makes a lot more money than pizza reviews you know right. or david day oh. trader or something like that and believe me you talk about i've worked for managers who can't trade and I work for traders who can't manage. Dave is my manager, and he can create fucking content. That guy. Oh, yeah. Like him or not. But and a lot Dave of people do not you. like him. Holy shit. He opens shit. boxes, for God's sakes. And it's that, the thing on the internet. That guy, ah. he has a pulse on what makes you, what is monetary value. I mean, that guy knows what makes money. Mm, yeah. He, so oh, it's, it's a, it's so a pleasure incredible. to watch him work. Um, he makes eating pizza look interesting. A doughy God Jewish sake. guy eating pizza. You know what I mean? Like, who, who, who the fuck? Who, what the balls on him for doing that? And I can't take a dump without seeing that. He's everywhere. He's the fucking guy. is uh, everywhere. A question that I always wanted to ask you guys, and I, I always wanted to ask you a little more intimate, not on the radio. When you're at Barstool, it's pretty well accepted that you either keep your personal life 100% put away or you just open your life to it. And you've chosen, for the most part, to open your life to it. And obviously, there's things you have to keep private. I understand that. But does that ever bother you? Like, does it? Does, there are people at Barstool that obviously struggle with it, right? They want to do behind-door meetings and shit, and they get roasted. Does that ever bother you, Large? Because, I, I mean, obviously, I didn't know you before Barstool. Mm -hmm. But does, it, was that very uncomfortable to start with? And have you gotten used to it? Or how does that work? Um, you know, when I first started, and I think the first time I had um, – one of the first uh, celebrities that I interviewed was, uh, was a Reverend Run from Run DMC. And I was starstruck and I didn't know how to sit. We had to do it up in um, Sirius's offices. So it wound up that the Reverend was sitting to the right of me. And instead of flanking him where you want to be able to make eye contact with everybody, I had Willie behind me. So it was like Willie, me and the Reverend. And so then when I was kind of starstruck on Reverend Run and his wife, I was big Run DMC, I'm a big old school hip hop guy. I grew up uh, in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. I used to go to school next to where Video Music Box was. It was just, so that that's my stuff. It's uncomfortable to think of that, but I was very hip. Um, <laughs> with the times. Yeah, and he was with his wife and he was saying how when Run DMC was hitting, he wasn't with his wife. And there became a point where if he didn't start to be with his wife everywhere, he wasn't going to be married and stuff. I was not at a point with that at all, but I find that being a Wall Street guy who is married, to, did I mention I was on Wall Street? Uh, who is married to a Wall Street woman. We always had that. We always had that. So if I complained sure. about something, she knew what I was complaining about and vice versa. And we worked together on the floor for a while and, and stuff like that. That makes sense. I didn't want to come and do this where, you know, like I'm kind of sitting at a desk next to KC in a half shirt. Do you know what I mean? Slugging yeah, beers yeah. Yeah, while I, someone's I passing me a dube and then go home and, and he say, how was your day? And I say, oh, that's fine. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I want her to make her part of it. On top of the fact that my wife's extraordinary. So she's, she's helpful. She's extraordinary. She's, she's passionate. She's all that stuff. But then, like, the kids part, you're a little bit more guarded with. And even, like, what yeah. my wife puts on, like, I don't mind if somebody says, hey, fat, baldy, bald, bald. But when somebody does kind of, and, you know, there's always that troll at the end who'll, suit, who'll give you a dig about your wife or your kids sure. or something like that. And you have to be ready for that. But when I started, some guy was like, listen, large, stop, stop with the family stuff. Uh, Dan and PFT had somebody to work with them and he brought up his family every now and again. And Dan and PFT clearly hated talking about this guy's family and he wound up getting fired like some sort of intern. And that was probably true five or six years ago. Now PFT has his situation, which he likes to keep uh, private. I respect Understand, Dan has his boy. situation, which he keeps relatively private, but everyone knows he has a kid. I respect. I very rarely talk to Dan about anything without first talking about our kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like oh, really? it, it's a different bar stool. Now pod fathers used to be Kevin until Kevin decided that he didn't appreciate the sanctity of marriage. I say that all the time. <laughs> cause I like the chaps. <laughs> it was uh, chaps and chaps That's is taking a little bit of a, a hiatus from us. He's just taking care of some business, which again, family stuff, do what you need to do. And yeah. It was Clem and they couldn't get anybody else cause there was nobody else. That, that had a kid and now we talk about willie before he had a kid brand new before he had a kid uh coley before he had a kid i told you about whitney and we had thornton on and we had hard factor west this week hard factor will next week i'm gonna have jamie dukes and we had big cat we had kevin back you know from it like all this all this kind of shit happening that it is becoming more of a family you know um oriented company like it or not and there's still a cd underbelly that just talks about blowing dudes well, you know, for, somebody like like me, <laughs> for somebody like me, like I, I came to Barstool, like there, there were an East Coast and I came with Pat McAfee into Barstool and immediately Pod, Podfathers with KFC uh, episode one. I've got two girls, seven and four. And so I'm, I'm just a little bit ahead of, uh, of Clem and right there with KFC as far as kids ages and stuff. And, and you came on and it's kind of one of those things that like I'm almost growing with Barstool. Like I, I kind of came in when Barstool first started to like blow up nationwide, really like right before the XM series XM yeah. deal and stuff. And I, I feel like I have like a little piece of me that lives within Barstool because not only do I have like, you know, the McAfee and I, I have a little bit of history, not quite with trash man, but then the pod fathers and I relate to all you guys. And, and my, I called in a, a, a couple of weeks ago to breakfast about I'm coaching my daughter and she won her softball championship. And, you know, th that's, that's something to me about Barstool that will always have a place in my heart, you know, whether they go down like the freaking, you know, blimp or whatever, or they just blow up nationwide. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to ride or die with Barstool for sure. You guys think about the gambling content because that's become where all our resources go to. Like I find that sometimes some of the other stuff is being pushed well, to the side, at least for now, right? At least for now. But like some of the other stuff, I, you know, I've been turned down for a couple of projects because of lack of resources that are going towards the gambling stuff. This isn't a complaint at any, no. I know yeah. what the 8K is. I know what everyone got paid. I know what the deal is more than anybody on this thing or possibly anybody listening to this podcast. So please. And you've also made us a lot of money too, by the way. So thank per you for that. Perfect. And so please yeah. don't think I'm ungrateful. <laughs> but right now, Barstool is putting its focus on gambling. How do guys who seem like you're, you know, for the most part, family men to a degree or people who want to be family men or regular dudes, not necessarily degenerate gamblers, unless I'm misreading this. Uh, we got <laughs> one. We got Trash one. Man's the only one. Trash man, yeah. Sh shocker. Um, like it's one of those <laughs> yeah. You don't think oh. that guy fucking sold bone marrow in a fucking pinch? But like, but what do you guys think about the, the shift towards, um, you know, the gambling thing? Is it too much? Can you still find enough? I'm blogging less. I know for a fact I'm writing so much less because I, I'll, I hate that, by the way. I'll go and I'll do like a 2,000 word thing about me shitting naked in a hotel and it'll get washed away with 13 people who just took the over. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it'll be wake ah. up or smoke show of the day and, and all of a sudden you're, you're right off the fucking, you know, page and it's like, 
where, where are you going to, you know, like, I don't know. And, and sometimes I write like I talk. So sometimes when I was doing extra larges that I did the little video series for Barstool First Gold. First of all, you need to, that Spend is that one of the up. best pieces of content I've ever seen on Barstool. And I've been a stoolie since before there was ever a podcast. That right. was worth, worth the price of Barstool Gold alone. Alone. I think I told you yeah. that. That, that, 90, that. Those extra a, larges were incredible. Had a 96% completion rate. And they were a six to 10 minutes a piece. Yeah. Nobody a had seven. a completion rate on bars. And this is the tallest midget in the oh. circus. Nobody That's had double completion my completion rate. rate. Yeah. Nobody it takes had me the completion rate to to of my thing. Like, so, and again, I think the people who listened to Extra Large or watched Extra Large were the people who read my blogs. And so, my blogs were Extra Larges. You know? So, and the, as far as like the gambling content's concerned, uh-huh. I I enjoy the gambling content. I think it's great, but I do think it's almost like it's a shift where it's they're pushing all their chips and do a table in the middle of the table. But there's a lot of people like not a lot of people are like me because personally I I love hearing Rico spout off about the under or the over or all this shit. Sure, Fuck but at the same time I I enjoy your like. I enjoy your point of view. I enjoy Kevin's point of view. Kevin's not involved with gambling. I mean, fucking Fuddleberg. I mean, he just got into gambling and yeah. that the making gambler thing's great. I think that's kind of a mixture, but I think that there needs to be more blogs like what you used to write on the site now, because there is a large portion of people who don't gamble. Yeah. Like and, a very- and I promise you, I promise you, that as much as I say that it's happening, that it will shift back. Yeah. And yeah. I it's promise a, you yeah, that the guys who create the content like the me will do is will do an extra large from a pen casino. Like, you know, like take advantage I, of that, re, you know, restaurant type stuff, or there'll be integrations with the guys who aren't traditional. Like I'm going to Vegas in a couple of weeks so, for Lomachenko versus Lopez. Yeah, and oh, I'll make, a, yeah, I'll make a pick on that, you know, because that's my milieu and that's not forced. That's not me all of a sudden telling you what to do in the Mississippi State game because you'll right. call me, you'll call me out on that, you know. And how many millions are you gonna be dropping on that? Oh, that's you know me. That's Loma, right? that's, that's Lomachenko, right? Uh-huh. Lomachenko, yeah. No, I'm saying like Lomachenko. Yeah, He's so good. my so my markers are problem. MMA fighter guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Lomachenko, I think is like three and a half to one right now. Yeah. So there's some value yeah. in taking Teofimo. Teofimo is not. Nothing. Listen, Teofimo has stuff in his head. His wife is in his head, right? Like he's 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 told me that on my on my on my radio show and stuff like that. So he's he's one of those guys that can. Whereas Lomachenko is a Ukrainian fucking machine. I mean, Stop I by. learned I learned how to say Merry Christmas in Ukrainian when I had because uh, I got <laughs> to interview him, and then I said to him, "Listen, you don't even need your uh, translator." And I pointed to his translator, not knowing that this guy was also his trainer. And also the trainer of Usyk, and that guy is like, <clears throat> so this trainer guy like looked at me. He had like the epaulette tattoos, you know, the bad news shit that you get from like that. I was like, holy fuck! Oh yeah. So Lomachenko, he's got another fight in him, right? I don't like the weight that he's at, but I, I think that it's not going to be a quick night. But I like Lomachenko. Right, that's a little preview. Um, but I'm going out. For, I'm going to fly out. They're going to swap me on Friday. I have to stay quarantined on one floor of the hotel with. 30 other pe- people from media, just me going from Barstool. I have to eat in their commissary. Just we will be serviced from one floor and then I have to go right down to the fight. So I'm going there and it's going to be I mean, the least fun trip to Vegas ever. So like that, like I understand that you're going to put a bet on that, mm-hmm. but that whole experience needs to be like a vlog. Even yeah, if yeah. it's just you with a fucking and GoPro on a stick. Right. Yep. So I'm doing it guerrilla style. So I am going to try and do, I wish that I could do more. Believe me, like, cause when Robbie went out to the McGregor fight, Robbie went out on Wednesday and where I am with boxing and where Robbie is with MMA are miles apart, even though Robbie could be my son. Like Robbie is. Robbie's younger than me. Yeah. So he's, <laughs> he's, and he does an extraordinary job and he really Very. loves what he does. He, he does. Loves what he does because he only does what he loves. Like, it's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. He's like, I love, you know, uh, Music 80s rock and roll and bands. WWE and, and MMA. Right. Yeah. And, and so anyway, so I, I, I like Robbie a lot. Um, I did uh, 
uh, one of the rough, rough and rowdies with him. I did a color for him when Dave's like, I'm not going to fucking Fayetteville. I'm in Nantucket. I can't get to <laughs> Honestly, that was one of my... I <laughs> love that rough and rowdy, by the way. <laughs> oh, did you? Just, did, speak of what you were just asking about, Large. Um, the gambling content, I think we can all agree, it is drowning out some of the stuff we miss as the common man, right? Mm-hmm. But you're going to go out to that fight and you're going to place a bet. And you're not an avid gambler. Or if no. you are, I don't know that about you. No. I think as a, us, you know, we, we all kind of try to dabble in gambling as, you know, in a limited capacity. Where we don't have that to drive for hours for it. Yeah. That's yeah. what's going to, I think, for, for Barstool and Penn, I think that's going to what is going to attract the next group of gamblers is yep. watching yep. people like Feidelberg who had never placed a bet in his life, learn from that fucking idiot, at least on screen, Marty Mush. And then people no, he, like, he's like, I'm going to watch a dad of three gamble on a fight in Vegas. And he's going to admittedly have the worst time of his life in Vegas. That is extremely relatable. Mm-hmm. So, so stuff like that, like the moderate gambling or like you and Clem could do something like, Hey, we have no idea about uh, cricket, but we have a Zimbabwe midget who's going to teach us how to gamble about cricket. Stuff yeah, like or that. even soccer. People like, like us just will, will watch that all day, consume that right. all day. So, and, and I appreciate the feedback, and that's why I had asked the question, because I think that's the direction it's going. Without yeah. it being like, hey, Rhea, pick these horses by the color of their saddles, like something that's insulting i actually like what blackjack does with the horses like those guys seem like they know what the fuck they're doing with horses i don't know anything about that that's something that i would actually like to learn um and i don't think they get enough credit but it is what it is um but the rest of the stuff is very easily avoidable for me very easily avoidable like i think eddie and brandon walker had gone who's on more shows at something i saw a clip of it so i clipped on it and I realized that everything that Brandon Walker's on, except for the trivia thing that I do against, I've never listened to a minute of it because Brandon's milieu and he does it as good as anybody. And he's very entertaining to a whole lot of people. Something I just don't give a fuck about. I think conversely, Brandon's probably never watched an extra large except the one he was in when I gave him Korean barbecue. Um, you know, which is, and that's fine. I don't, I don't consume any Barstool stuff, hardly anything. I read Jerry Thornton. I used to read Francis and enjoy him a whole lot. I still read Francis over at Brovi, I'll be honest with you. I do. Um, so it's, it, it's one of those things where I think if you're patient, the gambling thing will obviously continue to dominate, but we will start leaking back in um, some real content, myself included, like myself included. So, uh, so that so that's well, I think that's get the re- return on investment. You know, I feel like gambling going and then course. bring it back in. Exactly. Yeah, and if it, it yeah, and like I've seen what happened to the stock price. You guys have seen what's happened to the stock price. You know, and I'll tell yeah. you right away, I'm long pen and I'm not a financial advisor by any stretch of administration, uh, uh, imagination, but um I'm having a very good time with that stock. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, four dollars for sure. Yeah. And and I told Andy, I said, do not buy any more. I said, and sell what we have. I'm starting this stupid show with Dave. I don't want any liability. And she was right. like, nope. She kept every share we had, and she bought it all the way down to five bucks. And You're uh, done telling her what to do, right? I mean, she seems like she, that, that lady walks on fucking water. There's no reason for me to tell her what to do. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, she does some things incredibly poorly, and I happen to do those okay. And then I do some things incredibly poorly, and she does some of those things okay. And and we both hate the same people, so we're never gonna get divorced. I, I mean, Please. I I tell people all the time. I don't think you know. I I will kill her, but I will never divorce her. You know, and and <laughs> all everything I own is in her name. It's the easiest divorce ever if she decides to do it. Um, so uh, so it's I and you know that's something that I never complain about. Oh, the old lady's on me. I have no fucking complaints. That's such a weird fucking deal. I've, I've never understood it. Speaking, speaking of murder, I just have one last question. Uh, you're going to the fight this weekend. No, uh, two weeks. Oh, two, two weeks. weeks. Are you also planning on attending Mike Tyson's fight when and if that happens? And do you think it'll be against Roy or somebody else? So, Marco, like, we're in a situation now where we're both boxing fans, right? Yes. Like, we appreciate the sweet science. 
And there was a time where, like I told you, I didn't watch any American sports growing up. But me and my dad used to go to movie theater, watch closed circuit TV to watch guys like Marvin Hagler, watch guys like Roberto Duran, watch guys like Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez, the greatest Mexican fighter who ever lived. And listen, I'm not taking anything away from Canelo, but let's talk about Canelo. Could be the best pound for pound fighter in the world. I have met one, two or three. He didn't fight this year. And you know where Canelo is going to be for the rest of the year? In a fucking courtroom. You know who he's suing? Golden Boy. You know who's fighting possibly this year? A 47-year-old Oscar De La Hoya. You yeah. know who else is fighting? A 40 some year old Mayweather versus a Logan Paul. You know who else is fighting? Manny Pacquiao versus fucking Conor McGregor. You yes. know who else is fighting? Nate Robinson versus the other Paul brother. You know who else is fighting? Tyson versus fucking Roy Jones Jr. with Holyfield and Shannon Briggs kind of waiting in the yep. ring. So it's all this Andre the Giant versus Chuck Wepner. It's all this fucking Ali versus a new way. It's all this shit. And all these boxing fans want to see anything. I had the Charlo twins. I spoke to him last week. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the Charlo twins, but at least they're real fucking fighters. Right, this yeah. fight, this unification fight, lightweight unification fight, whatever the fuck you know, is a real fight. Like this is, you're watching a generational fighter in, in Vasily Lomachenko. Generational fighter. I mean, you know, the guy hits you more from behind than he does from the front when he's done the, like, rigging down. Real fucking fight, real thing. So, again, like I say, it's an honor to do my radio show. I am pumped that I'm going on a shoestring because all the money's tied up and everyone going out to the Philly house and bet me over. I'm going on a shoestring. They're paying for my flights. I'll take care of the hotel, I'll take care of food, all that stuff. And I'm just going to enjoy the boxing. And I'm going to try to get a little goofy and make fun of the uh, catering. Maybe make fun of the way that I don't fit the seats. Make fun of me getting That's... the Corona test. Maybe like make it out to the Hoover. Day. Whatever the fuck can happen, I'll try to make happen. But I'm dying just to see some real fucking gloves hit some real fucking skin. And so heavyweights fun. are the straw that stirs the drink. I know that. And I know that's on the horizon. I shouldn't complain because we actually have some heavyweights. But uh, man, this is going to. It's And it's free. It's not pay-per-view. Right. Lomachenko fight is going to be Bob Arum is putting it on fucking ESPN, so we're going to get it for free on October 17th. And I'll oh, yeah. I got to interrupt you because you told me to kick you out of here quarter after. I want to be conscientious of your yeah, time. I got, a couple, I got a couple minutes, so I, I, get, uh, I get to do 9.45 with Jeff, so if you guys want to wrap up in the next 10. Unless you want me to get out of here right now, you guys tell me what you want to do. Oh, we I don't want, to be we want you on as long. We, we, we'd love to have you on for three hours, but we just want yeah, to be no deal on time. That. Especially with Jeff D'Lo on that trivia. I tell you what, though, what do you think of that? I it, it's it's, it's awesome. cool. Like, it's it growing seems on. Like me. it's watchable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very. Yeah, and okay. so Jeff, like, is the busiest guy in Barstool. Just ask him. Um, he sits down. He gets in there when the morning show is there, and he writes out trivia questions. He's not splitting the fucking atom, but he's in there writing uh, trivia questions. And I think he gets some help from Nick Tarani, and he's got a couple of interns who are on there. But I think people like it because the big if true thing was convoluted like there was yeah. so many it movies. was but yours truly played it a lot <laughs> oh did you i did so yeah. you're one of those guys that came in man it, like yeah. i think the way the trivia is set up now it's a little easier to follow i played big if true a couple of times i was on the show did pretty well on it no big deal um but it's one of those things i never know whether <laughs> i never knew where the fuck i was at on it like you know right. like, go outside come on back in and you know call lifeline yeah you were like the first guest on the big if true or excuse me, the new the dozen, dozen, right? Yeah. I was one of the people that gave it a go that week that they had That's this year ago. Oh, and did it, you? Yeah. And it was fun. Buzzing yeah, in. Yeah. So who was on it? PFT, Brandon Walker? Brand, PFT, um, uh, Donnie, Liz Gonzalez, um, and Smitty, I'm pretty sure, was on the day I did it too. Right. And I think my I, team tonight is um, – I forget. I think it's Vibs and the oh, gentleman, Jake, Jake Marsh. Jake Marsh. Oh. He's a genius. Oh, well, then you're, yeah, he knows everything. I'm doing pretty well, right? Yeah. And then so. Bill so, Vibs is dumb. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> Vibs is dumb. He's the uh, smartest looking he knows dumb some person random I've shit. ever met. He knows some random <laughs> shit. Yeah. So I believe, I think that's it. I think it's Twisted History plus Jake versus uh, PFT and, um, and Brandon Walker. So we, this is our second time playing and we beat them last time and we beat them soundly. I mean, we mm. beat them like, you know. They uh, were not uh, on the same page when y'all beat them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So There's nothing really more entertaining at Barstool to me uh, 
than when Brandon Walker is being defeated in something. Yeah. If he is having a bad gambling day on the picks show, or if he is losing on the dozen trivia or something, he is a comical loser. It, 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 I, I love to watch that guy lose things. I mean, I'm rooting for him, right? He seems like a really nice guy and whatever. Yeah, of course. I mean, fuck, is he a hilarious loser? And him and Kate. Dave struck gold there. Thank God that one, <laughs> whatever betting app got him mad or whatever. Yeah, However the hell yeah. he came to my bookie. School. Well, him and Kate on uh, Morning Sunshine just shitting on each other all morning, like for like seven minutes straight, it, to me is something that's wildly entertaining too. Uh, just because they have zero like care about, like they are who they are and they recognize who they are and they know their own faults. And it, to me, the self-deprecation aspect and I, I love everything about the Morning Sunshine too. Self-deprecation is is at a minimum nowadays too with a lot of these people. Like yes. people willing to joke but not joke about themselves. Uh, Dave's a perfect example. Suit, man. Go to a fucking thing. But um, uh, yeah, Brandon and Kate do it well. I did. I was going to do a reoccurring thing where I do a Wall Street thing and I start doing drugs. I did one with the cocaine. <laughs> <That cool. laughs> and I think uh, I don't know if they got in trouble for it, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it was one of those things that uh, I like doing, and I really enjoy Kate. I, I, I do enjoy Kate. Oh, I like your story. Wonderful and person. Like that. And um, so, it, you know, like she's another one that as you go around the room, you start to, you know, mention more and more people who I just, you know, really enjoy. Coley. Jordan Barry. Jordan is fucking, she's aces. Jordan's aces by me. Um, you know, who's the scumbag? Like, I'm not willing to say it, but I think you guys know. Like, there, there are very few, and it's one of those things Large. where, what's that? Large. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, <laughs> um, so uh so that that's kind of extraordinary. I mean it's not as uh cohesive as it used to be. Like it's right. it's clicky. It's very clicky and some of the it, big I, big, I, but I, there's a couple hundred of you, right? I think. Yeah, but if if you want to know what my problem is with Barstool, I think that you have an incredible free opportunity to promote people, to promote people on social media. Social media is free. I don't know if that's a hot take. Um, and we just don't do it. And a rising tide lifts all ships. And so, you know, if you have, I don't have any followers on social media. I'm not very good at social media, but I do what I do and I'm fine with it. If I, if I could get up to 300,000 from my measly 70,000 or something like that, that would be good for Barstool. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, there should be somebody who says, hey, listen, you were hired because you do a social media thing. We'd be a TikTok or Twitter or Instagram or whatever the fuck. You have to promote two things a week. Just two things a week. You have to promote Mantis and you have to promote lowering the bar. You, you have to promote mm -hmm. Twisted History and you have to promote Podfathers. You, you have to promote uh, Two Bigs and you have to promote, you know, something. I, I think that if th that would go so fucking far and it's so fucking free, and it's one thing that we just haven't been able to, to get. I don't know if it's a Gaz thing or um, I don't know exactly what Gaz does. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's, Dave it's doesn't even know what Gaz <laughs> does anymore. <laughs> well, you're almost growing like. too fast for yeah. your, your, your audience is getting bigger by the second. And it, it's almost hard to organize. And I mean, from what? Like, there are some people there ago. who have inordinately big social media followings. Yeah. And like, let's take Ellie Schnitt, for example, who just left the firm. So I can talk about Ellie, uh, who I loved. Ellie is great. Yeah. Ellie was hired because she had these gigantic social media numbers. Ellie was also very entertaining. Ellie actually had a very nice fucking voice. Mm -hmm. Schnitt talked it very fucking Sounds well. Like an angel. Uh, Ellie, you know, do whatever. Like, there's, this isn't a dig on her. Why wasn't Ellie uh, talking about um, uh, she should, making honestly, the gambler? Why wasn't Ellie talking about Fantasy Football Factory? And, you know, she probably did, you know, or, or you know, Twisted or Extra Large or, you know, that's me, or Game Time or fucking the dozens. Here, here's one, one thing, because I've been a stoolie for so long. When there are people who have a large following or are in a specific situation, it seems like when they show up, they take that, like, oh, like, as a step up on everyone like i don't need to like promote this or promote that or and it's it's not just like it's not ellie or it's not just like certain people it's just Certainly it's not. a common theme that i've been seeing because 
I mean, like your recent hire, Dion. I've seen him do more promotion yes. for anything than I ever saw Ellie do. Jamie like Dukes is coming on Podfathers next week. Jamie Dukes yeah. will be on Podfathers next week. I don't know who fucking Jamie like, Dukes is. I know he's got a couple of kids. And, you know, he's like, I'm down to fuck. Dion I came in and said, who are you? I said, I'm large. I, I host a show you're about to be on. He says, Barstool, what's it? I'm like Barstool Breakfast, me and Willie Cologne. He didn't even recognize Willie, kind of like ham and egg did that he did. We got on. He's like, Large, I love your show, man. You know, I love, I, and <laughs> like, I love that. I, I fucking that's incredible. love that. And I don't know There's, much about Dion. I don't know much about Primetime. But so that, that makes you racist with me. What, what's that? He's a pro's pro. He pro's just, pro, he, yeah. He knows that if he wants to get better, people around him got to be good and they got to get better. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what we're, we're, we're idiots, right? This is a small podcast. We know we're not making money. Uh, we made you know, $6.66. That, that's dollars pay for six, six cents. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, but, that's... But we're, we're having a fucking blast doing this. this we are yeah. five, six yeah. friends from the internet. And we know that when we get funnier, we get guests like Large from Barstool on. Okay, we're not interviewing the fucking plumber from Scranton, Pennsylvania. So when I see it, when I look at it like big scale, compared to Barstool or whatever, it kind of ticks me up. Like you had that Beats and Eats program with Willie. Yeah. Uh, that no, should have been promoted to from, shit. From Wisconsin. I watched every episode of that. I learned so much and I had such a good time watching that. Nobody said a word about it. They didn't say a word about it on the yak, Here, not radio. That pissed me off so that, bad that's, for That you. is a tight-knit group. That's, a, you oh. know, to get promotion out of that. And believe me, that group is rife with followers. And you just, you just don't get, you'll get like that one so, day car wash and then not, Beats and Eats had its problems because we were going to redo it in the spring. Obviously the spring had Corona and we had huge problems with licensing any of the Beats part. So oh, we weren't able sure. to, we weren't able to put it on YouTube, we kept getting that D, DCA to whatever. Um, Cause people go after Barcelona Here's as soon as they hear a fucking song. I mean, they make, they make me put down stuff when I'm singing with my daughter in the car. Um, so but that was, I was very proud of that. Very you proud of that. that and I so thought well it was done. something that could go and it was high production value and stuff. Have you, have you ever thought of it this way? You could do beats and eights and you could, you know, do how you guys formatted the show, mm -hmm. but possibly like, you know, you have jet ski. Yes. So you could do something to where you could get recommendations of like independent people mm. and give them kind of a platform while you're doing something different and it gives the the listener or the watcher something to where they they go into it just completely blind and they can be you know delighted about it. Rappers. Yeah, and I think I so I think one of the guys that did that well was um, uh, fuck that's delicious uh, a big fat guy that was a rapper. What's those? Oh, Action, Action Bronson. Bronson. Yeah, so yeah, Action yeah. Bronson had yeah. the house band and was able to like kind of do that. So, and I, I thought he did that very well. And I think that's what Beats and Eats could have turned into. But sure. I think the the Corona because Beats and Eats was something that you got in before football season. That was the timing yeah. on that. You filmed it in the spring, early spring, and then you got it in during the summer before football season. So coronavirus destroyed Beats and Eats everything about production, that. and then the pen thing now with this and all that stuff that. So it's just one of those things that gets shelved and I don't know how to get it off the shelf, but yeah, doing something with more amateur music and stuff would certainly help. But uh, so if you guys want to, I'm going to probably uh, wrap we, up now uh, if that's cool. Yes, we'll wrap up. Um, we, uh, we ask every guest if they will share one story. We call it a local shit show large. So go as quick as you want, but anything stupid, funny, whatever that happened somewhat locally, dumb news, whatever, you have anything that jumps out at you? Yeah. Uh, so I went back to the movies last week. I'm actually going to write about this. And so this, the blog will, will read just like this. As you guys know, I went to the movies the other day. Finally got back to the movies. Just dying to get back. I saw Tenet. Oh, yeah. I didn't enjoy Tenet. I didn't enjoy Ooh. Tenet. But instead really? of sneaking, yeah, instead of sneaking in um, the heroes and like I kind of go nuts with what I sneak into the movie theaters, I took my 13-year-old son. I said, we're going to go old school. We're just going to do movie theater popcorn loaded up with fucking shot glasses of butter and we're going to go old school, you know, just peanut M&Ms and, and big Cokes, uh, fountain Cokes. And we did that. Filled it halfway up. They gave me a shot glass of butter because you can't do the self-serve butter anymore. Mm. Hit it with that. Shake it up. Salt. Give me some more. Did the whole thing. Shake. Give me one more. And we did that. And we went through it. 
popcorn fucking destroys me. It destroys <laughs> my fucking uh, stomach. So we had gone home that day, and um, and you know what else destroys my stomach? Fountain soda, like the syrup oh. in the fountain soda. Yeah. And, oh, uh, you were ticking time, Bob. Yeah, so we got home that day, and um, restaurants were open in New Jersey. I said, let's go to our favorite place that makes the best French onion soup, bar none. Outside this little place, Benoit in the city, place out by me, McMurphy's does a great job. McMurphy's in Ridgewood. Sat down, this is the same night, and um, I hadn't been home since the movie, and I went, I had uh, French onion soup, and my daughter ordered one, and she wound up not liking it. So I had two French onion soups. So I have two French onion soups on top of a big fucking tub of popcorn. <laughs> I get out of the fucking McMurphy's, we're walking towards the car, I'm a little bit gassy. I gambled, I lost, so I shit myself. I ran into the car with my wife, the kids are already in the back, my wife's in the front, because I let them go forward. And as soon as I sat down in the car, I sat down on my side, like this and then and she's like oh i'm like yeah yeah so because she knew like because yeah. i always have a bounty on me i always have a fucking bounty on me. so i, I no. did, a little, did the little man pond thing and then we went and uh yeah so and then so i i so yeah so i shipped myself and then i was choking on something because i had this esophageal thing at willie's golf outing the next day someone went down the wrong pipe and I wound up throwing up on the way into the bathroom and I got some on my leg and my shoe. And then we went out to play golf and I was wearing shorts with these athletic underwear. They're kind of tight. And so it's tough to get uh, your cock out without having it cinch on you. And so it did cinch on me and it kind of flopped my cock forward to where I pissed on myself. So within 12 hours, the Fiddleberg dribble. I shit myself, I threw up and I pissed myself. So I was like, maybe I'll go home and like jerk off on my foot. Uh, that's that's anyway. why we fucking love you, man. Uh, <laughs> that's thank you. Love. That was great. Thank, thank you so it. much for coming on. Uh, look up Twisted thank History. You. Look up Podfathers. Look up Barstool Breakfast. Thank you so much. At Extra large, large. Barstool on your socials. Uh, you get Extra the hell out of here. Thank you, man. Well, we're going to have guys. you on soon. You betcha. Uh, it was a pleasure, man. Be good, okay? Take right. care. Thank you, thank you man. Guys. Damn, that was bad. fucking God great. damn it. We uh I think For, I think we can wrap up with our own local shit shows, but if Well, my local went, shit show is I was pissing out my fucking slider next to me just so I could still hear what was going on. Cuz that's how much fun I had doing. on a mini cheeseburger? No, out my fucking sliding glass door, you goddamn idiot. Oh, oh. well who calls that a slider? <laughs> fucking me. That's uh, yeah, I get it. Thing. I thought you were pissing like out of your sliding you door in your trash truck. White castles or something, nah. and you're pissing on top of your white castle. <laughs> no, I have taken we, uh, a piss in the back of a trash truck before. It's not fun. We can wrap up with our own local shit shows, but for everyone listening at home, if you think that we just fanboyed for an hour and a half, it's we because did. we just fanboyed right. for yeah. an hour and a half. your ass, we did. Large is one of those white whales when we started He's, the anomalies we talked about how will we know if we made it like in our own eyes that was one of the guys we put on the list like yeah. so to, to just fucking talk to him about barstool shit primarily for an hour and a half i think all of us might lose sleep tonight because we're so fucking giddy I'm well like, i did not marco he'll just medicate but honestly i'm already medicated brother fuck you <laughs> i want some and also for the listeners, this is the first time I've ever drank on the podcast. So I mean, damn, it is for real. Yeah, we're like sixty episodes in. I get hammered every time. Fifty-eight. I've never. Who's counting? Oh wait. I've never. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. You got a local shit show, brother? No. Other than uh, other than I'm not high right now. Wow. I, uh, that is. That's a surprise. Flags? You got anything? I got shit, man. It's it's boring right now. I'm I'm just living the life of being a, a dad, working full time, being a teacher, teaching my kid at home, lunch lady. Um, so my shit show is just trying to like survive. So thank you, COVID. Marco, please tell me you have something. Save I have. I mean, kind of, but it's like the opposite because uh, so I was working last Wednesday for. Uh, the fiber optics. It was a shit day, and I was supposed to go up in the bucket, and I was supposed to be able to get to like do work, and I didn't get to. And it was hot, and it was just shitty. And my buddy sends me a message on Facebook. And he said, uh, "I don't know if you're looking, but if you are, I could really use your help at this job." 
So <clears throat> I basically, I didn't quit my job on the spot, but I definitely finished out the rest of the day and quit the next day. Um, <laughs> and I am, I am now uh, a home and building inspector. Yeah, motherfucker. I could have used you a few days ago. <laughs> which, <laughs> which for me is this is like my fucking dream job that I didn't know about. Because I've spent my whole life fixing all of the things that I have to go find now. Now so you just have just, to tell people. Exactly. I just get to walk around the house and be like, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Fix that. And it's all in my app. And it's all on my phone. I just have to take a picture, hit a button, and say, this door does not latch properly because. And it's all like, it's, it's, I have a dream job now. I it's have to tell fucking you this. awesome. What you're doing right now is giving us ammo if you ever fucking complain about your job you have just told it made us me late you today. have a gravy job it made me late today because we were waiting on a realtor and and she decided that she forgot what time it was so she ended up not even showing up and we had to show the house right motherfucker and it's not like you haven't been late to every other fucking <laughs> <laughs> so, so. So I apologize for that. That's also because we didn't do the thing we usually do where we talk about what time we're starting 50 times in our uh, private text messages. Um, I actually forgot this one was like a week ago. We were all at seven o'clock. Do you know how many times I've gotten high since that time? (laughs) (laughs) I'm high right now. I got six days out of the last week high and yet I still remembered. Yeah, well. So, no, I don't have a local shit show. I just quit my job on the spot, and I got a better one. All right. Sounds good. Tanner, you're uh, making a cocktail or something, it appears. I am 100% peeing, so keep talking. (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) Well, you're the last one to go, so (laughs) you better close the show, ho. Well, big news, though, for Tanner. He uh, he, he ended up getting a house, I believe. He he put uh, an offer in on a house, so hopefully we'll hear about that here in just a moment. Hopefully he had a home inspector than Marco. Um, (laughs) That was worse than a vinegar stroke, brother. I had... uh, I've been tr- holding in that pee for three hours. Hold on, are we, you uh, doing the podcast from a bathroom, or did you piss out a door? Bathroom's right there behind me. I'm in my basement, sitting in a recliner. Bathroom's right behind me. My teeth were floating. We, uh, Same. We got, home, we got home from work, and then I jumped in the bins with my roommate, and we were setting up the bins because we were about to harvest for soybeans, and... I couldn't pee because I had to run in here because I thought we were going to jump on early. Thanks a lot for, you know, Marco not doing that. And then we interviewed for an hour and a half, and I had to pee so goddamn bad, but I respect large so much I couldn't stop, so I decided to pee right there. I, I respect them too, but I can't get large it or whoever and piss myself. Did someone say something about a house or my house? Yeah, the yeah. Lot. Okay, yeah, so... I guess life update slash local shit show. Uh, accepted offer on my house, uh, our, our house. I got to get better at that. Brittany listens. It's to hard. Know, and I, yeah, I, it's ours. Um, this is our house. The one we're buying is our our house. But uh, she's a scientist. You're just a dumb farmer. She's so smart. Yeah, um, ten times smarter than you are, and I haven't even fucking talked to her. Here, it's true. Here's my local <laughs> shit show though. Home inspectors. You, you have to get yeah. a home inspection. You get a mortgage, blah, 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 blah. One fucking thing came back that slowed down this process. And Brittany might be learning about this on this podcast, but it was so minuscule. I don't even think I told her. The well has to be the, the pipe, external pipe. And if I don't know what I'm talking about, it's because I don't. It needs to be 18 inches above the ground or above disturbance in Wisconsin. If this sounds correct to any yeah. of you people. Yeah. Okay, not along because I know if I'm sounding competent. They're, they raked up leaves around this well pipe and it was like 14 inches above the leaves, but it was like, I don't know, like three feet above the fucking ground. So the inspector said, big red X, nope, no can do. This well pipe's out of whack, whatever. So my fucking mortgage and closing got delayed by three weeks so these people could come fucking home Tanner. and rake some leaves. 
Oh, I was so pissed. So pissed. Welcome to buying a house. Do you know how many Yeah, and I know other people have had worse situations or whatever, but that's so fucking dumb. If it would have been windy that day he was there, we would have been good. But nope, had to push her back. And I might be exaggerating three weeks. It might be two weeks or whatever the hell. But God damn it. That that pissed me off so bad. Marco probably is nodding along like, yep, you fucking right. So what what I'll say about that is um, that was dumb as fuck. On there, for one, you have to. For me personally, I have to have a stick ruler, like when I measure insulation depth and all that stuff. I have to use a stick ruler. So if he would have just taken a stick ruler and put it right next to that pipe to the ground, obviously you'll see that it's whatever 18 inches. Um, so that's dumb. That being said, when I'm in the house, if if there's still like a bed or a dresser, like I'm not allowed to move anything, so I can't check mm-hmm. like certain outlets and stuff like that. But that was a to- total fail by your home inspector because that's bullshit. Yeah. 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 But I think we got a closing date of like the 16th of October, 13th, that's something nice. like that. Cool. So uh, let me know I mean, when the party is. Me and Bria will make the make the drive. Yeah. We got to we got to make a couple payments first before I'm hosting any party. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. yeah you day can be like me and wait a year. Uh, here's the thing though, guys. Tomorrow is uh thursday when we're recording this yes it's a wednesday thursday is the day that amish people get married my roommate is waiting on me to get him home so he can start the pre-party for a wedding so we got to wrap up because of a goddamn amish wedding and or at least i got to because that's the local shit show that dude's six foot six and he's gonna pound me into the fucking ground if i stand between him and fucking Moonshine hooch at the, at the wedding. So. Well, Tom, we said cheers. Yeah, if you guys yeah. are good with wrapping up, I'm going to get going and I'm going to fly through I, these outros. So I'm at Vanilla Gorilla, at Tyler Allen, at JJ Fleckel, at Trashman Ronnie, at K Pasta Primo, uh, at Large Barstool. Thank you so much for coming on. Large's wife, St. Anne, has already agreed to come on as a future guest. So you have that to look forward to. If you thought Large was cool, St. Anne is one million times way more interesting. Uh, we are powered by Pro Sports Extra. Look them up on YouTube. Their YouTube is flying right now with subscribers. The blogs are coming out good. We, we really appreciate the backing of them. Uh, does anyone have any parting words? Uh, Cheers. We love Great. all y'all. Sorry, I was, school's kicking my dick in, so hopefully episodes will be more consistent. Ah, we love you, TA. But, yeah, we're going to wrap up. Thanks for rocking with us. We're out of here. Peace. Thanks. Let's fucking go! Is he? Oh god! I'm so wow, sorry, Brian. Don't invite me to your career day. Man. Yeah, you yeah. ate the shrimp that and had Jack shrimp. Daniels, and yeah. you got fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I remember he's so good, Tyler.